Welcome to another episode of The Read Pile. Today I'm talking about the Five Fists of Science, and this I am finally getting to. I pulled this off the shelf probably two months ago. I uh, tend to record these things weeks ahead of time, and there was a point a couple of months back where I was running low on videos, so I grabbed a couple of short books that I have read that I knew I enjoyed off the shelf and I was going to reread those quickly, shoot some videos, build up that lead time again. And uh, we three and Namwolf were the other two that I pulled off the shelf at the time. Those videos have obviously gone up by now, but Five Fists of Science was the third one that I had pulled off. And I am only just now during this uh, Thanksgiving time off getting to read this so it's going back on the shelf, but it is still as entertaining as it was. This came out in 2006. So I got this back then, read it. I, this is not a book that I think gets discussed much. I don't know how much people actually bought this. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Think about it often in the intervening years <laughs> and it's still just as ridiculous. Uh, today as it was back then but to discuss this is a great first page that sort of sets up the tone of the book uh, and it's even before we get to the characters so these character profiles here we go so we've got Mark Twain we've got Tesla we've got Baroness Sutner and it says I, I do recommend reading all of this as well it gives some actual history it gives uh, some details about things that the creators have changed, but we've got uh, we have taken great liberties with the Baroness's age and appearance within our pages, and for this we should probably apologize. Uh, over here we've got J.P. Morgan. In real life, Morgan was not a black magician; he was a Protestant. So they've got J.P. Morgan as a dark mage who basically, in a plot similar to Ghostbusters 1, has built a building that tunes into infernal frequencies with the help of Marconi and Edison and Carnegie's money. And since reading this, I have read more about the actual history of Westinghouse and Morgan Edison Tesla, and it's fascinating. Like, that whole period is wild. I do recommend checking out some books. I wanted to see The Current War, which was Tom Holland, I think Michael Shannon, and Cumberbatch. I still haven't managed to do it. But uh, I, I need to make an effort to do that, because this whole, like, that whole situation is, is just fascinating to me. Anyway, this is an extremely fictionalized account of that, well, it's not even really Edison-Tesla rivalry. It's more... Morgan and Mark Twain trying to stop. It's it's sort of competing agendas as far as the story goes. So J.P. Morgan has built this tower and people are dying in the construction, which I guess isn't that out of norm, except there are more deaths than are widely known in that building. There's also Mark Twain who's trying to make a buck. He is broke at this point in his life. And he comes back to New York, meets up with Tesla, whom he is friends with, and uh, tries to sell one of Tesla's inventions, which happens to be a giant robot. And uh, through showmanship, they put on shenanigans. They basically create threats, like this giant energy monster, that then Tesla's robot stops. And it's all in an effort to try to sell the thing to governments around the world in what they claim to be peacemaking, right? War-ending peacemaking. If everyone has this robot, then no one's going to start a fight, is the thinking. And uh, it's great. But we get, we get moments like this, which is Twain running down the hall shouting, to me, my scientists! It's, it's amazing. And even even the title Five Fists of Science, I don't think should be said Five Fists of Science. I think it should be Five Fists of Science with dramatic arm waving and finger pointing. And uh, I should point out two. So the five fists that are referred to in the title, we've got Mark Twain, 
Tesla, and this is Tesla's assistant, who they say is a completely fictional character. Uh, he has one hand that has been amputated, so five fists of science. This book is a heck of a lot of fun. I do recommend it if you can find it. I don't know that, it, that it's ever been reprinted. I will try to check that out while I'm editing this together, but um, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. I still enjoy it today as much as I did back in 2006, and there's a couple of things that I'll say could have been done better, I think, as far as Morgan and the development of his plan, the execution of that plan. There's some almost hellboyish elements at the end as well. Like it's there's a lot that's thrown into what is not really that many pages. There's a lot of time spent on sort of weird character interactions, which is extremely entertaining, but it, it doesn't help with the story, is what I'm saying. So I think more could be done story structure wise that would have produced a better book but uh still this is very entertaining i still very much enjoy it and i hope more people read this because this spends a lot of time in my brain and i've only read it once 16 years ago and that's that's sort of the the staying power that it has had with me so i bought this because of Fraction at the time, I had no idea what it was about, but on the strength of Fraction's name, I'm like, all right, I'll try it. And I have not been disappointed. I showed off a little bit of the art. Here is some more. This is actually, this is great. This scene is pretty amazing. But there is a snippet of the art. We get this battle going on as well. Go with science. So yeah, um, I don't know what else to say. It's it's great. There is a lot of effort thrown into this and historical fiction, extremely fictional. Still, I had a blast reading this both times.